Hi, welcome to Maker Melissa's Lab. In this video, we're gonna be putting this together here, which has all the electronics for the CNC, including the variable frequency drive to control the spindle. Let's get started. In my previous video, I covered all the electronics that will be going into the CNC I am building. Now to house all that, I have this PC case that I picked up from Goodwill. I've gone ahead and designed a couple parts here for the case. This piece here is gonna go ahead and fit right in here. And it's the size of a standard power supply. And then for this part here, I ended up going with a two-part design. It is designed to attach these six connectors in through here. So the plan is to mount this piece of acrylic on the inside where the motherboard would probably go. The advantage to doing that is I can go ahead and remove this and have everything attached on here in a way so that I can work on it if I need to or I can put it mounted in. This case has a lot of hot glue holding everything in here and one little trick you can do to release hot glue is use a little isopropyl alcohol. Mm -hmm. It comes right off. And I'm just gonna leave this one on here because I wanna reuse that. So the reason this wasn't fitting is because I had actually found it on Thingiverse and it was for a slightly different panel than this and I thought it would fit but it didn't. So I went ahead and I modeled this up in Fusion 360 and printed it off and it actually fits much better now. And. So for this piece, I actually ended up doing a little redesign and I came up with this. This will actually hold two different power plugs, one for the VFD and one for the rest of the power supplies. I've gone ahead and put everything in its position about what I want to end up attaching it. I have these not really attached and I have a couple spacers printed off because this has hanging off the side here. This little fan here I'm going to take out of here because it's going to be right up against here so it doesn't do any good.
I've gone ahead and added some spacers here and shaved down these screws here so there should be enough clearance height so it'll fit nicely in the case. For the M5 bolts I've gone ahead and used some of these nuts which are left over from the Prusa Bear project due to their thinness. I've also gone ahead and flipped around the power supply to the other direction and moved it over here. Okay, one thing you need to worry about with a CNC is the amount of dust that's flying around and you don't want it to go into like the computer case. So I've gone ahead and gotten some dust filter stuff. Uh, I have a roll of it here that I'm going to go ahead and apply to the case. Then I also have these magnetic ones which are great because they can just go ahead and fit over the case like this. And that'll allow me to go ahead and clean the dust off of there whenever I need to. Uh, one thing I've gone ahead and done is redesigned this. That'll allow me to take the connector here and mount these in here ahead of time. And then I can go ahead and take all the connectors and attach it with this into the case. And it'll make mounting this a lot easier. Okay, I've gone ahead and wired a lot of the stuff in here. Uh, I have the power going in here over to this power switch here. And it goes from the power switch to the 12 volt and the 36 volt supply. I have the other outlet going to this switch here, but I haven't wired it up any further. Then I have the 12 volts going to the Arduino here, or the Metro actually. I have these little tags here that have a little adhesive on them, and I just have little zip ties. And that's just to keep the wiring all nice and neat. And what I need to do at this point is I have to get this VFD in here. Uh, the angle of the screws on here does make it really hard when you have the VFD in here so the order of everything going in here is kind of critical. This little switch here it's for selecting whether you want to go from like 0 to 10 volts or 0 to 5 volts for controlling the spindle speed and by default it is from 0 to 10 volts but if I go ahead and I flip them all down then it's uh, 0 to 5 volts. It was kind of a little obscure thing in the manual. Okay also I forgot to mention uh, these fans here are all wired up in parallel and there's this connection so the one on the door can just plug right into there and these are just going over to the 12 volt power supply. So it turns out I have a little bit more space than I thought so I'm going to go ahead and just screw everything down including the VFD and this acrylic board and just go from there. That actually makes things a lot easier. Now to get the spacer where I want it, I can go ahead and put the tip of the screwdriver where I want it, release the spacer, and then take the screwdriver out and slide it into place. Okay, I'm a little nervous about powering the VFD up for the first time, but I just have it power going to it, routed from the second plug, and it's going through this rotary switch, and I have the front panel extension going through here, so let's see what happens. Oh! We got something. Okay, I have no idea what that means. I assume that's frequency. Oh yeah, okay, that is the frequency because if I turn it, it changes. And then, I bet if I hit run, it would normally power the motor. I'm gonna call that a win for now. So let's hit power, and the fans are going and turning, and they're blowing out here, and if I had the lid one on, it would be blowing in, because I have it pointing that direction. Now with fans, you can't wire them backwards, you just have to flip them around. Okay, let me show you what I have going on here. So I have these kind of spade terminals hooked up to these wires. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this into the VFD. I already have both of these power outlets grounded and this. I need to ground 
the circuit for the VFD, the circuit for this, and the case all together. And I got this little snap action block that I can go ahead and plug these into, and then I can get it all tied together. Okay, the plan is to hook these four up to these different stepper motors, and I've just kind of wired these all the same, but not in any really specific order. And this one's gonna go for the e-stop switch, and I don't know if, what the right wiring is on that. And this is gonna go to the spindle. Okay, this wasn't quite going down solid, and I just realized one of the problems is for this fan wiring, the little wire that I had for the uh, panel here is actually under the board, which was making it uh, take too much clearance, and so these screws didn't hold so well. There we go. Okay, that's much better. Okay, it's a little slight miscalculation on my part. Apparently this cable is pushing up against the stepper driver. So I think the only way I'm gonna be able to get this to fit in here is to actually take this all apart, move the stepper driver over just a little bit, and then I think that'll give me enough room. So I've gone ahead and moved these over here. Instead of it being about two inches or about five centimeters apart, I've reduced it down to four centimeters. I think there'll still be enough airflow because these are kind of gonna be mounted vertically so heat can still rise from them. And there's definitely enough room now so the uh, connector panel can get in there. I've gone ahead and shortened this down a bit here for hooking into the start and hold uh, terminals on here. I think the rest of these are actually a pretty good length. So it turns out that the screws weren't quite catching on this plate. It was just a little bit too thin. So I've gone ahead and I redesigned it. I made this plate much thicker and I made these little indents here so the screws will actually go through and poke through and have enough length. Okay, so these are pretty neat. These are called twin ferrules. They're intended for combining two different wires into the same one. They're a little bit wider at the top and they have a little bit bigger diameter than the single ones here. And now you can see with the twin ferrules that fits really nicely and I can just kind of jump to the next one and the next one and the next one. And here's what it looks like when it's all connected. Okay, now I have all, I have all the wiring that goes to these ports connected. I have the 36 volts going to each of these uh, TB6600 stepper drivers. I have all the grounds tied together. I don't have these attached. And the reason I have not connected that yet is because I'm gonna go ahead and do a spindle test with this. I actually don't know how long I actually need the final cable to be that goes from here to the computer. So what I'm actually gonna do is wire something I know is gonna be at least long enough, probably too long, and I'm gonna go ahead and hook it right up to the VFD here, and that way I can know whether I'm gonna be doing the red, the yellow, or the white wire that'll be connected to the different things there. Okay, let's try it. run a quick test of the VFD with the spindle here. And it looks like, according to the manual, I don't even need to program in any settings to at least just do the test by the panel itself, which is perfect. So let's turn that on. Then I'm gonna hit run. And then I am going to start turning this up. And there it goes. I don't want to go too fast with it just being a water-cooled spindle because I don't want to damage it. So I'm going to call that a win and turn it off. So I've gone ahead and removed the slot here and I put it in this thing. But what I'm going to do is use this to plug it into the little Z-probe spot here. And then I'm gonna take the Z probe, which is used for detecting the height of the uh, milling bit, and it kind of sends it back to here so it knows when it's homed, basically. And I want to actually have this plug into there. So I have one of these plugs here, 
And what I've gone ahead and done is designed and printed a little strain relief out of TPU here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that together. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters that made this video possible. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, the link is down in the description. And you can also help me by just subscribing to the channel and that helps things out. In the next video, we're going to actually start on the CNC build itself and that should be a lot of fun. 